Today I'd like to talk about something that's really important for engineers. Engineers often relish doing the technical work. But like in the movie Cool Hand Luke, sometimes what we have here is a failure to communicate. And so to get at this problem, what we'd like to do is understand why it is that as engineers sometimes we don't like to write or present and then separate the criticism that we have of our writing and presenting from the content generation. Finally, we need to master some of the fundamental structures of engineering and business communication. Now, in a short micro lecture, this is almost mission uh, impossible. Uh, writing and presenting are complex human activities. But our quick survey is going to give us some really important success keys. Now, in the micro lecture, I'm going to focus on writing, but I want to emphasize that almost everything that we talk about can be applied to presentation almost directly. So let's dive in and start with the prime directive of writing. In the television series uh, Star Trek, uh, Starfleet was under the prime directive, General Order Number 1, which said don't interfere with pre-warp cultures. With writing, the prime directive is to just write. The problem is that we have an endless circle of criticizing our writing, wadding up that piece of paper, throwing it in the trash can, trying to write again, wadding up that piece of paper, trying to throw, uh, and throw it in the trash can, and, and trying over and over, endlessly criticizing our writing before we've had a chance to really generate some content. So what we're going to try to do here is to master a writing process in which we generate stuff, a second uh, uh, phase of, say, quick planning, and a third phase of revision. Now, to get the sense of this process, we're going to start with this generation phase. And we're going to learn how to practice the generation of mass quantities of writing material. Now, how are we going to do that? Well. A writing instructor named Peter Elbow wrote a very influential book a number of years ago called Writing with Power. And in it, he identified a really uh, fundamental exercise to getting fluid or fluent at writing. And it's called free writing. And basically, it's a process of uh, writing for a fixed period about anything that comes to your mind with the additional caveat that you're not allowed to cross anything off. And so the idea is to prevent criticism and to just keep writing. Now in class or at home, I recommend that you do this for a fixed period, say three minutes. Um, but the, the point of the exercise and the rules of the exercise are to not stop. So if you get stuck, just write some nonsense words down and don't cross out. Um, and when you do this, the idea will be to get the feeling of what it means to write without interruption and without criticism. Now, after you've, you've gotten that feeling, one of the things that comes to mind is that, well, you don't want to just write about anything that comes into your head. And so you need to learn how to direct your thoughts at the writing at hand. And so typically in grade school, many of us were taught to prepare detailed outlines and try to come down to the, the finest detail of what we want to say. But this, this kind of hyper planning that we were taught actually gets in the way. So um, Elbow and others recommend things like uh, what we're going to suggest here. And I'm, I'm going to call it quick planning. And it's sort of like the creation of bullet points for a PowerPoint presentation, where at the highest level you say what the main flow of the material that you're trying to get across. So, and, and you can do this hierarchically. You can do it for the whole piece. You can do it for a section. You can do it for a subsection. But the point here uh, isn't to try to understand everything all at one. The point here is to discover the logic and the content and their interrelationship uh, of the, the piece that you're writing. Um, so that's really more a matter of, of creating something like bullet points. In the third phase, you sort of combine these two things. So in with quick planning, you sort of direct your free writing or your directed writing at material that you might generate. So you've done a quick plan and then you've generated pieces of material um, 
uh, maybe pages and pages of material, but it's, it's not a finished piece at all. It's just little snippets and little uh, phrases that are good. Well, in cut and paste revision, uh, you get out a scissors and a glue stick and you cut and paste the piece together. Now, in a day and age of computers, people resist this. I mean, paper and scissors and glue sticks are so old fashioned, they're so 20th century. But the point is, is to give you the feel of what it means to cut and paste, to give you the feel of what it means to be experimental towards, towards your writing. And, and the slide has a number of steps that you can take um, to help you do this, uh, like write, writing on one side of a sheet and using scissors and glue stick to make it easy. Those, those points aren't uh, essential, but they do help help you get the feel of what it means to cut and paste uh, revise. Now, of course, if you do like most people do and write on a computer these days, the point is to get the sense of what the process of good revision is like. And good revision is not treating uh, a, a, a nice looking piece of bad prose in a computer as sacrosanct. Good, good revision requires experimentation and movement of pieces from one place to another. Now another point here is that um, the writing that we do for, for business and technical purposes, for business and engineering, is different from uh, writing that you might do in literature, arts, and sciences courses. Uh, an English teacher wants you to write a clever essay uh, with a nice thesis and, and, and surprises and, and, and for it to be artful in a certain way. But business and technical writers are busy and business and technical readers are busy. And so, um, we need to have uh, cues uh, to, for the reader as to where they are in the writing. Roadmaps, titles, keywords. Um, we have to understand that the busy technical reader is, is likely not to read everything that you've written. And that different readers may read differently. Uh, a techie is going to read a, a detailed tech spec very differently than a CEO. So, we need to master two structures to promote the uh, effective business technical reading and writing. Um, what we call BPR and lists and amplification. Let's talk about BPR. Now, forget freshman English. There are no clever essays to write here. We need to write, a, write an, uh, uh, an essay or need to write a piece that sort of explains where it's going. And to do that, we need to master BPR, or Background, Purpose, and Roadmap. Um, and uh, like the Army saying goes, tell them where, what you said, you're going to say, t say it and then tell them what you said. But BPR gives your reader an idea as to where they are and where they're going and why um, the piece is important to read. So let's talk about background. Sometimes background sections are called motivation, but Background is trying to solve the fundamental discontinuity of, of reading and writing. When you write something, you know what's coming next, but your reader hasn't got a clue. So you have to solve this fundamental discontinuity between what you know and what your reader knows by, by telling them about what's the setting of the piece? What's the setting of the section? Um, if you're talking about a project, what's its history and background? Uh, why was it undertaken? Who, who are, what are some of the key times, dates, and players? But a key thing to remember when you're writing the background is to keep it short. The clock is ticking. Your, your, your reader is always at risk at being distracted or doing something else. So, so, so do this quickly. The next part is purpose, or, or what we'll call rhetorical purpose. And, and it's signaled in business and engineering writing with phrases like, the purpose of this report is, the purpose of this memo is, the purpose of this section is, etc. Uh, or in this report we will present X. Um, and the point, one of the points here is to say it out loud. Um, in a clever English essay, you may be told not to do that. You may be told to be more mysterious or, or less direct. But in business, you want to be direct. This is not a mystery novel or a freshman essay. So, um, so say it and, and announce it with phrases like the purpose is uh, uh, and, and so forth. Now, another point is to not confuse the project purpose with the rhetorical purpose. The project purpose is about what the project is about. The rhetorical purpose is, well, what purpose is this piece of writing uh, serving? In other words, uh, a, a piece of writing 
uh, this, the report might be a final project report uh, summarizing all the results, or it might be a progress report. But the, the rhetorical purpose, the purpose that is important here is why is this report or section or subsection being written? And that gives the reader a clue as to why it should be read. And finally, the roadmap is is um, is a summary of what's coming next. So and and again, don't be bashful. Don't don't hide this or disguise this. Say something like, "In the remainder, we'll examine X, Y, and Z," or "In the remainder of the report, examines X, Y, and Z." You have to tell them where you're going, and if you don't, they're going to be lost. So give your reader good clues as to where they're going. And um, Another point to keep in mind is that BPR is iterated hierarchically. At the beginning you do this and it's quite elaborate. When you're in a subsection or a section or subsection, you also do it. It might be more abbreviated the deeper you go into uh, the hierarchy. But you'll do this at the beginning of sections, you'll do it at the beginning of subsections, um, but there'll be less context needed when you're in the middle of things and things are flowing. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is you should not assume that your business or technical reader is going to have read everything previously. So part of why you set the context re over and over again is people are jumping around in the writing to, to find what they need from the document in engineering or tech, uh, business writing, uh, which is very different than assuming the, the assumption you can make that your English teacher is reading your, your clever essay. Another key structure is uh, uh, lists and amplification. Uh, and, and this is crucial and a significant difference with uh, the kinds of essays that you write in humanities courses. So um, lists should be used frequently and um, um, uh, throughout a report and, and they can help you summarize, they can help you create a road map. Um, and so, uh, for example, what do I mean by lists and amplification? Well, a list is something like, here, here we have item one and then you state what it is, item two and you state what it is and so forth and then what the remainder examines each in more detail and so you would then have paragraphs that would correspond to items one two and three this this is actually uh, a nice way to assemble your writing in tinker toy fashion in a, in a way that can be uh, uh, very effective uh, and cover the material it's not fancy but it gets the job done and it and if if you do these things if you let your your reader know um, where he or she is, and then go there, um, they'll thank you for it. So the bottom line here is that engineering and business communication are, are daunting tasks. Um, um, and to master them, first thing is to learn to generate lots of stuff by separating the writing from revision. Let's, uh, the content generation is creative, the making it work is critical, separate creativity from criticism and you'll, uh, you'll be a star. Uh, also, we want a quick plan, but not over plan. Um, writing is often a, a job of discovery of the logic and the content that you need. It's not something that's sort of fully formed in your mind. And as you write, you discover interrelationships and pieces of information that should be there. Also, recognize that your reader, listener is a busy, busy person and use devices like background purpose, roadmap, BPR, and lists as aid to navigation. And then uh, uh, finally, even though we haven't talked in, in this micro lecture about presentation, these same ideas that apply in writing apply in presentation. And so if you follow them, uh, you can be a good presenter as well. If you master these skills, you'll be on your way to being a master engineering communicator, and that should benefit your, your work life and your career.